Hey guys, thanks again for uh, coming to check out the YouTube channel, Principal Outdoors. Again, if you can, give us a subscribe, give us a like if you like it. Um, I had a question from a dealer today, and they had a customer that wanted to hook up their outboard to their hummingbirds. They actually wanted to see what they see right here on the screen, right? I get this question more and more every year. So uh, last year I did a video on my personal boat on how I hooked up my Optimax to a Helix uh, G3. And uh, so let's take a look at that video now and uh, we'll discuss it a bit after it's done. So as Humminbird sales continue to grow, we get more and more questions on how to hook up my Humminbird to my outboard engine to receive data from my engine. Uh, so this is how I did it on my boat. I'm running a Lund with a Mercury 200 Optimax. So you open up the cowling and you'll see in there a harness connector. Uh, and that's what outputs the data from the engine. So what I purchased was this blue cable right here. And this goes into this little adapter, male, female adapter here. Now that blue cable may already be under your uh, console if you have uh, SmartCraft gauges. From there, what you gotta get is this Mercury gateway right here. That's the important part. So that's what's gonna help get the information to the Humminbird, right? So this gateway is a Mercury part and I'm gonna put all the part numbers up uh, as well with this video. From there, it goes into this part right here. This is a NEMA backbone. So this you can get from different companies. It's not necessarily a Mercury part. It's not a Humminbird part, but uh, no matter what brand of sonar you use, if you're hooking it up to your outboard, you're gonna need a NEMA backbone like this. It's just a different, uh, different kind of cabling right here. So the uh, gateway plugs into the NEMA backbone. That metal connector on the left comes with the, with the Mercury gateway. The red drop down T connector right there, that red part, that's for power because your NEMA backbone needs to be powered. And then from the next one right there, uh, the last uh, connection, the drop down T on the right, um, uh, that's uh, what is gonna go and connect to the first Humminbird part that you need. So this is, uh, uh, it takes NEMA 2000 signal and, and converts it to NEMA 0183. A Helix will only read NEMA 0183. If you have a Solix, you do not need this part right here. So with the, continuing with the Helix, you take that part, it goes into a dongle, which is, uh, we use that a lot for connecting up the Helix. That's behind the unit right here. And there you go, it's all hooked up together. I'll have all the part numbers uh, online as well. All right, so there you go, there you have it. That's how it was done. Uh, as you can see, it's not an inexpensive thing to do. Um, and uh, the one thing to remember too is, you're, the only data you're going to see on your Humminbird is what the engine outputs. So if the engine's not outputting fuel flow, or for example, the engine doesn't know how much fuel you have. So you'd have to install another sensor, sensor fuel flow sensor, uh, into your NEMA 2000 backbone if you want to see that. So the Humminbird can only see what the engine outputs, so you may want to check with your engine manufacturer to see what, they want to, what, what that engine outputs through NEMA 2000. The other thing is uh, that video that I just showed is on uh, Helix G3, so last year's Helixes. One of the changes with the G4s this year is they will read NEMA 2000. So that converter box, that ASETH NEMA 2K that you saw in the video is no longer necessary for Helix G4s. Um, uh, what we replaced it with is this Helix NEMA 2000 adapter cable. Uh, so this, because there's no metal connections in the back of a helix, this is the adapter cable that you need. Now also keep in mind, if you have a Solix, any Solix, they always read NEMA 2000. So your NEMA backbone could plug directly into that. You don't need adapters. You don't need that NEMA 2K adapter for, that was needed with the G3s. And same thing with the new Apexes that are coming out. Uh, you don't need any adapters for that. Your NEMA backbone can connect right back into that. So I hope that makes it clear. Uh, again, uh, just to say what I got on my boat when I did it, again, I didn't add any fuel sensors because it would have been expensive. So the data that I got from my Optimax uh, onto my Humminbird was engine temperature, oil temperature, RPM, and uh, alarms. One time I had an alarm go off and uh, it went off on the Humminbird as well. So that's the data. Now, again, I can expand that if I want by adding more sensors, but right out of the box, that's the data that I got. So I hope this video helps. Please leave some comments, give us a, a subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks.